everybody. This is Pastor Brady Henderson of the Menorah Podcast, and I'm here with Deacon Al. Say hey, Al. Hey, guys. How are we doing this week? So we are here, Al. It's hard to believe that we are already on the fifth episode of the Menorah Podcast. I, it's hard for me to believe uh, February. This is the last day of February, and that means that we are already one-sixth of the way done with this year. Can you believe it? That is hard to believe. I mean, it is going fast. So anyway, we are so excited to have you guys uh, tuning in with us uh, today um, on the podcast. And whether you're watching on YouTube, Buzzsprout, Apple Podcasts, wherever it may be, uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about rest. That's the episode we're talking about. But before we get into rest, I want to talk a little bit about a quick history of the leap year. Now, Alan, when you hear leap year, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I don't really know. February's long. <laughs> February's longer than normal, right? I, I get an extra day. Yeah, yeah, a leap day, right? The, so you you want to know what I think? I think of the person who was born on February 29th of a leap year and how they have to wait every four years to have a birthday. Now, yep. I mean, I know that's not the case, but they have to either choose February 28th or March 1st. Have you ever known anybody that was born on a leap day? I don't think I know anybody that was born on the 29th. I don't think I don't think I do either, but uh, maybe some of our listeners. If you were born on a on this day, a leap day, let us know. And by the way, happy birthday! Yep. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so just to give you a little quick quick history, I looked into this, um, and I'm taking this information from Time Magazine, an article that they did. But uh, according to them, a leap day is once every four years, and it goes back all the way to 46 B.C. According to them, that is when Julius Caesar reformed the Roman calendar. Before this change was made, a Roman year was 10 days shorter than what our year is, and it was divided into lunar months. In order to keep that year in tune with the seasons, the Romans wanted to do that. They would add an extra month every other year or on certain years. So that's interesting. But see, Julius Caesar, he actually noticed that the Egyptians had a calendar that was based on the sun instead of the moon. So apparently the Romans were basing it on the moon, you know, and then obviously over the years discrepancies came up and there was a pope that developed a uh, a calendar in 1582 and that's how we got our modern day leap year. So it started a long time ago, over 2,000 years ago, and it has since been reformed. But did you know, Al, that England did not adopt it till 1752? That seems pretty recent. Yeah, so pretty recent as, as is the leap day and the leap year. So, hey, that's a quick history. If you didn't know anything about it, there it is. Uh, we didn't go crazy in depth into it because we want to talk a little bit about rest today. Alan, when you think of rest, what's your definition? Rest to me is, is something that um, takes away the stress, yep. uh, something that takes away uh, an urgency, uh, uh, you know, a f- feeling like you got to do something. Mm-hmm. Or just, you know, a lot of times when you do stuff that requires um, mental sharpness and, and you go through that, you don't really, you're not really tired, tired, but you're mentally tired. Yeah. And I think that. For me, I think that's a lot worse on me than being physically tired. I enjoy being tired physically. Uh, I feel like I sleep better and and mm-hmm. and the same. But um, you know, when you when you do when you think you do a lot of stuff that you have to keep straight. Yeah. Such as episodes for podcasts and, <laughs> and editing of them, videos right? <laughs> and things like that. Um, it's, you know, to me, it's a, it's a different kind of rest. Exactly. And for those that don't know, not only is Alan a participant on the podcast, he does all the editing, uploading and everything. So make sure you thank him for that. Yeah. I mean, I I think you're right. And I think, I think Alan rest looks differently for different people. And I'll never forget when I worked at the grocery store, uh, as a teenager, you know, one of the guys I worked with, he said, you know, I, I can work this job. He actually left the grocery store, and he said, when I worked at the grocery store, I would come home physically tired, right? Uh, but then when he became an accountant, he actually said, um, now I'm mentally tired. So mm-hmm. there's two different kinds of tired, and I think we all get that. But I think we live in a culture, Alan, that has become, and I think our listeners will agree with, with what I'm about to say, a culture that has become go, 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 go. 
Now, I know I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be hypocritical here, but I know I'm a go, 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 go person. And I know sometimes I keep you on your toes. We're always doing something, working on something, which is good. But at the same time, you can get tired very quickly. And there was a survey that was done in 2016 that I found. Uh, They surveyed 18,000 people from 134 countries. And they found that of that eight, of those 18,000 people, 68% of them felt that they don't get enough personal rest. Now, rest for some people could be like you and I going down to Santee and going fishing for a day. That could be rest to us. For others, that could be taking a four-hour nap on a Sunday afternoon, which is one of my all-time favorite things to do. Mm. You know, th- those kind of things. But I think it's important, number one, that you find out what is restful to you and number two, that you do it. Uh, because I think burnout, not just pastoral burnout, we talk about that a lot, but any kind of burnout is uh, toxic and it is uh, you know, widespread in the world and the culture that we're living in. And I think people need to find, to find rest. Let me ask you, Alan, before I go over some more statistics, what do you do for rest? Well, you know, at different times, it may be different. I have been known to do a little fishing. Sometimes that's a lot of work. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it's it's you're you're going through uh, different motions and and things, and you know, no matter how well you plan some of these trips, they seldom turn out like they're planned. Um, and so, but the overall experience of things, um, one of the things I do is I deer hunt, yeah. and. That's because I enjoy the solitude of sitting uh, in a stand um, by myself with my thoughts. And, you know, I enjoy, it's hard for me to get up early in the morning to do that. But I do enjoy watching and listening to the world wake up. Yep. You know, if you've ever done that, you know, the thing that always strikes me no matter how hot it is or how cold it is, how many bugs there are, I always note the first bird I hear. And it's often before daylight. Yeah. But it's it's amazing how uh, you, you watch the creation wake up. Yeah. Um, so I do uh, a little bit of that. I actually enjoy a little cooking. Okay. So. I got you. I've never eaten any of your food. Can you believe that? I can't believe that. <laughs> I mean, we've been friends this long, man. So anyway, well, that's good. That's good. Everybody has their own thing that they do for rest. There's another poll that found that 33% of people in America report extreme stress. And 73% of that 33% report that stress impacts their mental health. I think we could all agree with that. I think uh, not getting enough rest uh, can be really bad for your mental health. And that's something mental health was not something that was talked about. 20, 30, 40 years ago, but it is something that needs to be talked about. It is something, you know, and I think even when you look at uh, the World War II generation, uh, actually, let's go back all the way to the Civil War. Uh, when you when you look at when those guys came home from the Civil War and World War II, but specifically with the Civil War, they had not figured out what PTSD was yet. Right. They had not figured that out. And I read, uh, I actually read a book not too long ago about how many Civil War veterans came home with mental health illnesses, but nobody knew they were in mental health illnesses. Right. They just called them crazy, you know. And in South Carolina specifically, you know where they sent them, right? Uh, Bull Street, right? And so, um, you know, that's that's sad. You know, we need to do more. We need to do more on that. But let me give you some t- statistics. I'm a pastor, and, and Alan's a deacon, so I want to give some statistics about pastors and their rest and how they are or are not resting and so on and so forth. So I've got these statistics in front of me, um, but and, and you might have heard these before, and I am not sharing these, Alan. You know I'm not sharing these for sympathy or anything like that. I'm sharing this to give our listeners uh, a wider idea not just of pastors but people in general but specifically for these statistics of of how detrimental it is when pastors don't get the rest they need 
and uh, not just pastors, but really anybody. Anybody, yeah. Um, but for these statistics, 97% of pastors uh, have been betrayed before. Um, 70% of pastors battle depression. 7,000 churches close each year. Is that not alarming? Um, mm-hmm. That's very scary, sad. 15,000, pa- or excuse me, 1,500 pastors quit each month. Uh, only 10% of pastors that start out as pastors will retire as pastors. So that means that I have a 10% chance. Uh, I'd like to retire here, but who knows? You know, who knows what God's going to do? 80% of pastors feel discouraged. 94% of pastors' families feel pressure. 78% of pastors have no close friends. Well, that's not me because I'm sitting here with you, so there you go. But uh, 90% of pastors report working 55 to 75 hours a week. Um, And I think, you know, I think that's a major problem. So whether you're a pastor listening, whether you're a church member listening, you need rest. And and I think we also need to allow others to rest. Maybe not necessarily your pastor or whoever, but like, you know, if you know somebody's got a lot on their plate, try to let them rest. Don't overload them. Don't don't cast, you know, something you could do on them, you know, and and I think we could all learn better from that. I know I could, you know, and be better about that. Let's uh, share. I want to share a few scripture verses. Uh, before I share those, Alan, you got any comments on those statistics? Anything? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, at your statistics. I'm, uh, I go through them, you know, as you were giving them out. Um, some of them are, are a little, um, I won't say vague, but they, you know, the one about the, the pastors feeling discouraged. Um, you know, I, from time to time, I felt discouraged about a lot of projects. Um, but overall, I don't think I'm, a, I'm generally discouraged. Yeah. But yeah. They're, 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 it's an ebb and flow, if you will, yeah. um, in, in times. And a lot of things, you know, you were talking about not just pastors, but, you know, think about the number of times that you may come home from work and there's something going on at work that you're you're mentally trying to resolve you know you're bringing that home with you exactly and you are spending your time time that is you supposed to have reserved for you and your family you're spending that time on things of work yeah um there's a there's a little saying that I like to tell people I said you know I've been through a lot of cemeteries for, uh, I guess, a guy my age. But I said, one thing I've never seen on a tombstone is I wish I had worked more. Huh. Wow. You know, and you have to think, in most cases, um, you know, you might have um, some folks that you work with. If they experience a death, you may go to a funeral yeah. to support them. Yeah. But you won't be involved in any of the decisions, any of the medical care or anything like that. I no. mean, those people, it's its a, a, a means to an end, I guess. Yeah, so, exactly. So, um, you know, I, I think we underestimate the importance of mental health. Absolutely. And, and we're not advocating laziness by any means. Oh, no. I mean, we both believe in hard work, and I believe we both try to do that. I. But you got to have time for rest, too. So we're going to wrap up today's podcast. I'm going to share five scriptures that can hopefully help you focus on rest this week. We're getting ready to go into a weekend. and can't believe it. March is here tomorrow. And I uh, hope you have a great March 1st tomorrow. But Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, I love this verse, Alan. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. As Jesus speaking there. Now to the Old Testament. Uh, This is one of the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You need to rest. When when God created the world, what did he do? He created it in six days and rested on the seventh day. And that's so important. We we totally underestimate that. Uh, And yes, God did that on purpose, I believe. I don't believe that was an accident. I agree. Um, I don't believe God does anything by accident, but especially not that. Uh, Psalm 62, verse 1, For God alone my soul waits in silence. From Him comes my salvation. Uh, Hebrews 4, 9 through 10, So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. So that's really good. And then I love this one. I hope this will encourage you today. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything. 
But in everything, not some, but in everything, Mm -hmm. by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, Short and sweet, you need to make sure you rest this week. Yep. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in to the Menorah Podcast. We've loved having y'all on. You need to make sure you tune in next week. It'll be our first episode in March, and we will be doing our very first interview. We are going to be interviewing a church member, Lee Sanford. And we hope you have a great week. And don't forget the purpose of Menorah is, is to share the light, speak the light, and send the light of Jesus Christ to a dark and dying world. We love you. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.